I begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land and pay my respects to their elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Today is the day 18th of the Grand Australian Ride. Today I rode from Geraldton to Carnarvon. The ride date is 17th of May 2022. The time taken was 8 hours and 30 minutes. The weather was warm and dry. The distance I travelled was 481 kilometers. The terrain was flat and the road was straight. I did take one fuel stop when I started at Geraldton and then I stopped at halfway point at Billabong Roadhouse for fuel and I finished at Carnarvon. Good morning. Um, so today is uh, today is day today is day 18 and um, <laughs> it's 17th of May so it's day 18 17th of May uh, I'm in Geraldton right now and I'm leaving for Karnarvon uh, the distance the time right now is about 6 45 I should leave by 7 I know I'm leaving a bit early today uh, <laughs> That's because it's a pretty long ride. It's uh, 476 kilometers. So, um, but by the time I get there, it generally ends up being about 500k. If it is for 20-25 kilometers here and there, adds up anyways. So yeah, yesterday was a pretty long ride as well, about close to 425-450k. Um, by the time I finished, the schedule was 415, but I think uh, it's definitely gone up than that. Um, I stayed in an Airbnb last night, so I'm still there. Um, sorry, it's a little messy. It's just a, just a room in a house. Um, the cost was far less. I don't remember it now, but I will have it on the website. Um, you can check that later on. Apart from that, uh, in terms of today's uh, point of interest, um, I haven't zeroed in on anything yet, but I believe there are a few things that I would be able to see on the way. Um, but honestly, I haven't zeroed in on anything. Um, I, I didn't just get enough time to, uh, uh, you know, research the route. I did briefly research it last night, but uh, there is a few things uh, that you can do, like Shark Bay, I think, and there's Monkey Mia that comes on the way as well. But there's a bit of a ride to get there. Um, and otherwise there are long uh, activities that might take longer amount of time so let's see how it goes today uh, no matter what I say in the morning by evening I would have done so many different things so I am uh, expecting today won't be any different it would be quite uh, there would be a lot of things that I will uh, experience and um, uh, see you on the way um, and yeah looking forward to the ride um, I'm well rested, <laughs> um, very well prepared for today um, and uh, hopefully I should be there by 5, 5 o'clock. So that's the goal, to be there before sunset. Um, the idea is to get to the accommodation, settle in and go and have dinner and have enough sun, uh, daylight uh, to go to dinner. So by the time I come back it's always dark. But at least until then, if I get daylight, it will be nice. So that's the whole idea. Anyways, I'll uh, get going and I'll get you on the road. All right, so we're all good to go now. Um, it's seven, nearly 7.30 right now. I was hoping to leave by 7, but that's okay. I'm half an hour behind. But the sun is rising. So that's uh, uh, really good because I don't like to, I prefer, I'm, I'm avoiding to ride um, during uh, uh, dusk and dawn due to uh, animals crossing the road. So let's get started. Jaya Jasakti Mata Ki Jai. Krishna Kanaya Lala Ki Jai Om Gan Patai Nama Har Har Mahadev Har
the first stop of the day is of course uh, for fuel there is a fuel station just down there um, actually I can go from the other side not very far from here nice views of the ocean that's Indian Ocean that you see over here Melbourne doesn't have Indian Ocean Melbourne has I think uh, Pacific yeah Pacific um, yeah so last night I did <coughs> walk down from here actually went from this side and it's just down there is the A1 running just there so the plan is I had mentioned earlier is to uh, ride around 470 or kilometers 470 75 something um, it's going to be a big ride I don't know uh, what's going to be uh, coming on the way uh, no, I mean I did look at a few things but I um, couldn't zero in on anything so I decided I'll just go freestyle today and see what we see um, as we travel along so going with an open mind uh, the only plan is the destination um, but obviously the criteria is not to spend too much time like as in three four hours kind of thing or at any stop try and be reasonable time wise and I guess that's uh, about it I came here last night I thought uh, it was more of a pub than um, I had a walk I walked down here um, it was more of a pub than a restaurant or anything like that because I saw on the on Google that it was a bistro so I thought I'd probably find some veggie food here but uh, anyways then I went back got my uh, got, got musty and then came again down here and a bit further down there is Hungry Jacks so I just got a veggie burger over there like I always say veggie burger is my best friend <laughs> uh, at dinner times um, yeah and uh, because it was straightforward easy last night I was a little tired as well I didn't want to be uh, running around to find food I just realized I need to uh, oil the chains uh, I ha haven't oiled the chains yet so uh, um, I guess I should be fine if I just uh, get to my destination today it will be like two and a half thousand kilometers since I oiled the chain but uh, okay this is that side is available yeah so it'll be four and a half thousand kil uh, sorry two and a half thousand kilometers by the time I oil the chain but the last time I oiled uh, someone said ah oh, you know what you're just oiling too much and it's creating a mess so just reduce it so I decided to go as down as uh, 2000 kilometers but right now it's two and a half already anyways I'll fuel up and then I'll update what I have over here until then catch you later all right so we filled up nearly 10 liters and 18.8 .8, so 9.95 and the rate is 188.9 uh, that's um, that's not bad uh, it's weird trip F is supposed to be for the time when the time when uh, the Karnar were on the right Ok, 
Okay, uh, we are taking the right from here. Karnarvan. Karnarvan is uh, where we are going today. I am spelling it like Karnarvan. <laughs> it's Karnarvan. I think R is silent. Anyway, so what I was saying was, uh, it's weird. You see the trip F flashing over here? I don't know if you can see it in the thing. Trip F is a feature of uh, Royal Enfield. Uh, what it is, is, uh, you know, when we say the word, uh, when we say the feature reserve. So if the bike goes into reserve, it's, uh, it, it converts into Trip F. So, but I just filled up fully. So I, oh, it's changed now. It's going to trip A now. That's good. Yeah. All good. We are on our way. Um, gradually getting out of the city. Geraldton is uh, a pretty decent sized city. Um, it's on the coast as you can, as you would have seen earlier. Uh, we're kind of on the coast most of the time because we're doing a circle of Australia. We are you know we are on the near the coast at least some places we go kind of in the interior because australia is not a circle it's like that so bottom is fine but as we go on the top we won't be going to the tips we'll be going we'll be more inland we just come out of town uh, there is a roadhouse as you are exiting the town um, road trains route this is 36.5 meter maximum long uh, around SA and you know Nalaba region it was I think 48 meters or something 42 or 48 uh, actually in South Australia in in Western Australia uh, as I entered WA I think uh, around before Evan stop um, I'm very keen to know how the landscape changes as uh, we travel around Australia Obviously, I know interior is all uh, red and desert. Uh, there are farms around here. Uh, it's more of a sheep country. There is like sheep everywhere. Uh, maybe that's one of the big things over here. Wool must be big around here because there are a lot of sheep. Today uh, is day 18 of my ride around Australia. Um, Geraldton to uh, Kinarvan is the right of the day. Highlight, I'm going with an open mind, nothing fixed yet. Distance around 480 kilometers. Now, summing all of that up, one thing I have to say, on day 18, it does feel a little monotonous sometimes when it's riding starting part is exciting your friends family are all like oh yeah you're going you're doing the australian ride and everything but as uh, you start riding things sort of become very monotonous uh, the excitement dampens um, when you're starting from melbourne like i did around here things become like yesterday the pinnacles were nice very nice, very different and very good experience, but still the exp excitement was a little bit dampened. So I'm like, why does that happen? But there is one little silver line to the whole thing. Uh, people, when you meet people, that's what keeps everything alive, you know, different people. And if you're meeting someone for the first time and they find out, oh, you are riding, you know, around Australia, like yesterday. I stopped at a petrol station after the fall of the bike uh, to get a soft drink. So it, there was this Indian guy. Um, I was surprised that he was there and the whole team was uh, like really young Indian uh, guys. And I was talking to them and I was like, oh, you know what, I'm riding Royal Enfield. And he, he was like, wow, because Royal Enfield for Indians are, you know, it's something close to their heart, particularly guys who like to ride bikes and uh, then we had a short conversation and uh, it was exciting you know so 
it just sort of pumped me up again that oh yes that's it you know this is fun what i'm doing i had a lot of fun yesterday but still you know uh, you do get a little lonely when you're doing it solo even when you're meeting people like uh, but like day before yesterday uh, for like one and a half days i was my wife had come to see me in perth so i had a bit of a break there but still at the end of the day when after she left uh, for melbourne um i just realized i was just by myself again so yeah so that's the challenging part of the ride so far in terms of riding uh you get a good grip over the bike riding long distance you get used to it riding on a daily basis you kind of get used to it as well uh tiring side of things every now and again you do feel a little tired but overall um you are i mean i am able to uh ride last night i was quite tired this na- this morning when i woke up i kind of felt the same I, w- i felt like i need to take a break but then as i start riding i'm like on a semi level right now but on the way i'll probably have coffee one or two times and uh, i should be fine uh in terms of uh, the bike itself so far uh it's been uh, fantastic um royal and phil himalayan is a good bike uh, it has proven proven so far um but we will know more as we drive more and more as we ride more and more but otherwise apart from that um uh, so far so good i would say in terms of uh, the road conditions till now i have never had a single uh, day where i would say the roads are too bad or our roads are bad the roads have always been good so if you are planning to do this route just do it um in terms of the weather and wind condition i specifically plan to leave in at the start of may uh, i think i went left on 30th of april uh i i would say so far it's helped me um there has been some rain on the way but you know the reality of life is you will face rain you cannot avoid it um so best thing is just to just not think too much about it and just get it get going if you think it's too hard for you to ride in or on a day when it rains uh don't ride just take a break um for me it's been okay so far uh as i go north i think the rain uh will get less of course because it's very dry up there uh behind me before path up to path there was a bit of rain between devonstop and path um a little bit every day uh which which was fine uh, one of the day between devonstop and albany was very heavy rain but yeah it was fine so yeah just a quick uh, i thought i'll mention a few things to do with the ride so far uh it's been uh, amazing north hampton now um nababa there is another town called nababa on that side cbh bin so that's a bin again like we had seen it earlier to store all the grains and things like that uh some areas it's uh, common to have a bin there you go that's a signage northampton 1844 it's 64 that's another t another tree spot another museum right there 
Chevron Museum. Plenty of museums around here. That's Devon. So Horrocks and Kalbari, you go on the left. Otherwise, you keep going straight. If I find a decent coffee shop somewhere, I'll just stop and have a coffee. Um, have some water and coffee. Hmm. Uh, looks like there's a coffee shop over here. I'll just check it out. Uh, just left Geraldton. Geraldton, uh, sorry, just left uh, Northampton. Northampton is only 50 k's from Geraldton. But I thought I'll just have a quick break and um, have a coffee or something. I don't know, I just felt like taking a break. Uh, uh, started off really well. I thought it would be good to take a break now. Um, I saw a good coffee shop and I thought, why, why not? Well, why not? Because down the road, um, right now there's a bit of traffic. But I, as I go ahead, the traffic will reduce and it will get more and more isolated. Over here I could get proper cappuccino, they had soy milk, everything was perfect. But as I go along, uh, that will start going away. Uh, maybe Karnarvan. Uh, I'll find things, but on the way, I don't expect much. <laughs> All right, so we got Billabong, which is 129 kilometers. Uh, I didn't know Billabong was actually a place. <laughs> uh, I think in Aboriginal language, it means like a pond, but I guess that's a place now as well. So, yep. Yeah. Overlander is 177, Wuramel 246, Denham 309 and as always we are, our destination is the last one on the list which is Karnarvon, Kanavon, they call it Kanavon, 378 kilometers, so that's where we are headed, uh, we'll obviously, uh, it's 3, 9.30, I'm going to try and uh, see if i can take uh, the next break at uh, billabong 129 case um, uh, 9 30 10 and hopefully get there by 11 o'clock 129 kilometers and one and a half hours so, sounds fair to me uh, if i'm going at 90 kilometers an hour i should i think it should be fine and uh, yeah, 378 kilometers, uh, Carnarvon, that's the destination for tonight. Emus, look at that, it's running with me, yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not, there is an emu over here, yeah, see there,
there were two of them one managed to cross it's hiding somewhere the other one turned around so we're trying to cross and I was going this way and one of them cross the other one stayed on this side but the the one that cross was running along the bike I slowed down of course uh, I don't know from what point it has been captured I tried to switch on the camera SAP but yeah that was something quite an experience so yes there are emus in Australia when they show you a sign it's there now this is not dawn this is not dusk broad daylight it's about 10 o'clock and animals can cross so for your own safety like for my own safety I have to be very careful as well <coughs> rest stops there's something I wanted to show when you're in Western Australia there is a concept called rest stops they have basically it's off the highway big space like this you would see there are benches where you can sit have some meal you can park over here stay overnight there are bin facilities there is a toilet over here and uh, just down there there is a facility to dump the waste if you are right uh, if you're driving a caravan and you need to clear the waste okay yes you can dump it there I'll just show you where it is and this is the main area plus there are bits over here I don't know where these roads go to but somewhere in the bush now I'll show you there's a spot to burn things out over there see there's uh, some burns there's another bit over here where you can maybe cook uh, you need to use timber to do that uh, I need to go on the left but I'll go reverse to show the waste disposal facility so what you see on the right over here dump easy <coughs> this is for caravans to dump their waste so if you are in a caravan and in Western Australia on A1 every 50 to 100 kilometer space anywhere between 50 and 100 kilometers you'll find these facilities I have arrived at uh, so I have arrived at the half point which is uh, Billabong now Billabong from what I understand is not a town it's a roadhouse community uh, it's right here that's what I understand uh, because I can't really see anything apart from this road house so yes I believe so it is a road um, road house community um, apparently it is a popular spot something uh, I read somewhere that it has a world heritage uh, rating for something uh, this is Bilabong homestead that is Bilabong roadhouse uh, it's a cafe as well that one too let me just ride over there and check it out yeah it's like a community there is a motel over there now this is the roadhouse a lot of people seems to be stopping over here this also has a motel looks like this one seems to be more popular 
yeah let's take a break over here and then i'll get going and i'll also fuel up too uh at the billabong door house i just filled up about nine liters and 18.9 is the 189 is the rate so about 17 dollars is what i'm need to pay there you go so i'll go inside and clear the amount and then i'll park the bike on the side and just get a coffee or something I think over here and uh, and also fueled up i of course uh, i think I, I have recorded the fuel cost as well took a little break uh, yeah just stood over that did nothing really just took a had a drink uh, something cold uh, like a passion flavored some passion fruit flavored drink and um, yeah just just wanted to take a break from riding briefly so yeah now get getting going uh, so uh, good I've left uh, Billabong Karnar Warren is about 247 so that's roughly about halfway point so in this route <coughs> Billabong is definitely a good stop I had something to eat earlier uh, as soon as I left um, um, what do you call uh, Geraldton so I wasn't that hungry but I still had a bounty bar over here they had chocolates they had all kinds of drinks food they had a lot of vegetarian options available as well so yeah and there were a lot of people stopping by so looks like a popular stop over here because in this span of maybe 100 to 200 kilometers this is probably the only place you can stop so I guess bound to be popular um, <clears throat> it's not the only roadhouse there is another there are two of them I stopped at the Billabong Roadhouse but just be before be just next to Billabong Roadhouse there's another Billabong uh, hotel or something like that they also have a petrol pump and all so that and also they also have a motel Billabong Roadhouse also has a motel so as you can imagine there is there must be some sort of a competition between them but anyways uh, this is the shark bay area so we are as you know we are riding along the ocean on my left hand side somewhere further down is the ocean and we are, as the name su suggests uh, shark bay so it's popular for sharks uh, monkey mia is not very far from here i think somewhere over here as well uh, I think uh, it's a long two days ride that Monkey Mia goes on the left hand side but we would be going straight ahead. Uh, Monkey Mia is a spot where you can actually encounter dolphins up close. I think that's where it is. Uh, also amazing spot for diving. That's why you see so much crowd around here at the Billabong Roadhouse. Um, maybe there's some off-roading and stuff like that around as well but I think it's more to do with the monkey mia. Uh, this, I haven't seen any sign yet to indicate monkey mia direction for monkey mia, but I'm hoping that it will be somewhere sometime soon. So many butterflies in this region. They fly on the roads, and then all of a sudden, when I'm passing by, they just come straight onto the helmet. Uh, monkey mia on the left hand side from here. So they sometimes they come at that height, and as and as uh, I pass by, it just sort of uh, shoot straight into my helmet. My visor, I just clean my visor. Like when I stopped at uh, Billabong, which was uh, about 40 km, 35 kilometers from here. And I already got like two, three uh, uh, butterflies, monkey me at 155. 
stuck on my visor right now. So that sort of obstruct the view every now and again at certain distance. I have to clean my visor to get rid of all the stupid butterflies sticking on it. So there you go. Now from this point, uh, all the major tourist spots like Shark Bay and all are on the left hand side. Um, from Denham, Shark Bay and I think Monkey Mia is that side as well. But we will keep on going straight because we are not turning anywhere. And I'll just briefly stop over here and uh, get the visor clean. Put enough of rubbish on it. Look at that. Shark Bay, there is a uh, uh dolphins and sharks and tortoise and some other stuff uh hemingtel pool is there monkey mia is there nanga cape uh, all this stuff you can maybe find it on the internet but uh that's from here this is what it looks like <laughs> it's just some bins and a board that's it you know dustbins and a board dustbin so people don't mess around this place and you know, throw rubbish everywhere so that way as you can see is shark bay shark bay world heritage area going straight ahead that way so that's like 150 k's over there if our return trip would be close to two or three hundred kilometers uh, and 200 kilometers that way is my destination for the day so i'll give it a miss because i'm already riding four five hundred kilometers today and in a bigger scheme of things better to give it a miss it is a very very straight road i'll probably have to show you from the sky how straight ro this road is So red down here so I had to get the drone up to see what it looks like from the top and as you would have seen it looks beautiful a very very different scene to what you would have normally seen uh, but yes it does look like Australia Red sand, bushes everywhere, wide open spaces, long straight roads, that's Australia and the outback of Australia. So we are in Australian outback proper and I can say that based on what I've just shown you from the sky. Yeah, and oversized vehicles, <laughs> right here, they're moving uh, they call a, a pre-assembled building, an office, a house or something. 
maybe just a cabin for one of those uh, tourist parks. Uh, I can see the building actually shaking a little bit. There it is, man. There, oh, it's actually, uh, huh? Yeah, it was a building, yeah. It was a building, maybe even a my office for a mining site or something. back there so I just turned around to go back and see when you see when you see brown boards it's always something interesting on it see it says 26 parallel 26 parallel leaving the northwest on this side but my route is from going that way. Oh, people have even stuck stickers on it. So must be a significant sight. Twenty-six parallel. Welcome to the northwest. So must be something to do with the globe and the time zones or something. I am really not too educated on these things. Didn't expect it to be here, so didn't do any research on it. But I'll probably just do a quick stop. Why not? signages have started coming up the town center is, is a shortcut on this side um, I'll probably just follow the route Coral Coast Tourist Park that's where I have got my accommodation for tonight uh, that is the reception office so I'm just going to park somewhere over here. Uh, has to be the other way. And then go inside, check in. And then I'll show you the room. Okay, so we just... Uh, I'm in the com uh, Holiday Park compound, Coral Coast Holiday Park. Um, back behind me is the office um, the cabin I have is cabin number 11 which is supposed to be just around the corner so there is a pool over there on my left hand side the building on my left is the common facilities uh, let's see which is 11 I think it's this one. Oh, there it is this is 11 A really nice location um, so this is it on my left um, that room over there has got some amenities in it uh, which is designated to this cabin um, we'll check that out as well first of all Let's just get into the room and see what it's like. Okay, I've got the keys over here. That's me. Hello. All right, so that's a key. Okay, 
there you go so we got one two three four choice of four beds here fridge here tv dining table our microwave another room bed air conditioning is on looks like it's warm over here because it's cooling okay so that's the cabin it's supposed to be en suite but let's see i think it must be this room so it's part of the thing okay so it's toilet shower and sink all the towels and everything is provided here so it is en suite but in a separate building and you pull and it's close done so here we are also got a dining table and a web bar it's a barbecue so this is the place common amenities is right there so common bathrooms and toilets i don't need it because i've got one right here that's where the reception is that's where the main gate is so there you go all the caravans are at the back and now i'll uh, settle down and give you a quick a brief in a minute on what happened during the day and what's going to happen tomorrow hello today is 17th of may and day 18 of the tour uh, i am currently in uh, a town called i don't really tell it i'm karnavon i started my journey from geraldton and uh, arrived in karnavon i started around 7 30 in the morning uh, and i arrived around four o'clock so it was a pretty long ride the total distance was 475 kilometers in total. Uh, that's the estimate, but I still need to check, or check the odometer of how much it is come up to, which I obviously posted on the website. So, uh, yeah, the uh, as I come towards, uh, so basically, the highlight of the day was a couple of things. Billabong Roadhouse, that's where I stopped halfway. That's pretty much halfway on the route. Um, as I arrived over here, the town looks very tropical. Um, coconut trees and I saw a big banana on the way. I'll try and capture it on my way out tomorrow. Um, but otherwise, the uh, room seems quite nice. Uh, the weather seems to have changed. It's become a bit warm around here. Uh, I was definitely feeling warm on the way here. So the weather is changing. Um, Secondly, I um, uh, another incident happened on the way uh, when I was riding. A couple of emus were trying to cross the road. One of them did, the other one did. But after the emu crossed the road, it sort of started following me. Or I followed it, the emu. I don't know how it happened, but I was riding straight. But I slowed down, and we had a steering competition at about eighty kilometers an hour. <laughs> and yeah, so it was funny, uh, but I tried to capture the emu on the camera, on the helmet camera. Uh, but apart from that, um, uh, obviously meeting people all the time, that's pretty normal. That's sort of become a normal thing. Now you meet so many people approach you and they talk about the bike and uh, talk about your ride and things like that. So you meet people from all over the country. Uh, and often overseas as well. Uh, yeah, apart from that, the town seems quite nice. I'm going to just uh, walk down about five minutes, there is Woolworths, and then about 10, 15 minutes, it, the town practically ends. Uh, there is a beach over there. Um, as I was coming here, I saw there were a few caravan parks and holiday parks on the way. So it looks like a pretty popular tourist spot. Uh, tomorrow's ride is from here until uh, Nanutara. Nanutara is actually a roadhouse. I think that's what I've been doing. I met a friend in Perth, uh, uh, Samir. He travels a bit and he mentioned that 
uh, Nanotara is actually a roadhouse when you look at the plant. And, and yeah, so it turns out I'm going to stay in a roadhouse once again. <laughs> um, and yeah, so that's uh, the plan for tomorrow. And um, yeah, it's one of the longest I've had so far and pretty long. So I'll call it a day and I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, good night.